On March 22, 1881, in the city of Kulmbach, Germany, Hans Wilsdorf was born. Hans's father was an ironmonger with average financial status. Hans's life went on as usual, like other people, until his parents passed away within a year of each other. After the death of his parents, the responsibility fell on his uncle. His uncle sold his brother's ironmongery to support Hans's education. During his schooling, Hans became interested in foreign languages, particularly French and English, which ultimately changed his life. He befriended a Swiss boy at school, sparking his interest in Switzerland and a desire to work there. Upon receiving his diploma, Hans abandoned further studies and went to Switzerland for work. There, he began working in a jewelry store and excelled in sales due to his proficiency in foreign languages. After several years of working in the pearl trade, Wilsdorf was introduced to the watchmaking factory of Kuno Korten by one of his friends and began working there. Kuno Korten was a watchmaker who produced automatic pocket watches. After some time working as a salesman, Hans's interest in watches grew, and in his spare time, he learned how to work with automatic watches. Until the age of 20, he worked there, but then he was forced to return to Germany and fulfill his military service. After completing his military service, he went to London, where he resumed working in watchmaking and gained more knowledge in this field. After a short period of working there, Hans married a girl named Florence Frances May Crotty. Florence's brother had a good financial situation, and when he saw Hans's professionalism in watchmaking, he proposed they start a watchmaking factory together. In 1905, they registered the Wilsdorf and Davis Company, which produced mechanical engines for pocket watches. After some time, they found good customers, one of whom was the Hermann Egler Company, which produced luxury watches. At that time, wristwatches were only worn by women, and men used pocket watches because automatic watches could not be made small enough to fit on the wrist. This intrigued Hans to create a watch that could fulfill this purpose, leading to the creation of the world's first automatic wristwatch. After this success, Hans and his brother-in-law decided to change the name of their company and produce their own watches. They first changed the name of their company to Rolex and began producing automatic wristwatches. As time passed, Rolex's sales increased day by day, and all these watches were seen as special timepieces. When World War I broke out, most European factories, especially watchmaking ones, went bankrupt. However, this was precisely when Rolex reached the pinnacle of its success. The reason for this success was that the German army used Rolex watches for its high-ranking officers, essentially buying all of the company's products. This led the British government to harass Hans and prompted him to relocate the Rolex company to Switzerland. He purchased an office in Geneva, Switzerland, which interestingly remains the same office as Rolex's headquarters today and has not changed its location. In 1926, Rolex launched another revolution in the watchmaking world. The company introduced the Rolex Oyster, the world's first waterproof watch, which caused a sensation worldwide. Hans was an extraordinary businessman and made the most of all opportunities. To make this watch famous worldwide, he utilized a stroke of luck that had come his way at home. At that time, a swimmer named Mercedes Gleitze, who intended to swim from England to France, caught his attention. Hans quickly approached her and asked her to wear one of these oysters around her neck and swim the eight-hour route. When the swimmer successfully completed this task without a single drop of water getting inside the watch, it became front-page news, skyrocketing the value of the Rolex company.
And that was the story of an orphan who founded one of the best and most expensive watchmaking companies in the world. 